This video is about the Nine Years' War in Ireland. The war lasted from 1594 to 1603. It began with an Irish attack on British forces and the Battle of the Fort of the Biscuit. In the end, the main leader of the Irish, Hugh O'Neill, surrendered. England fought Irish clans, but also in the end of the war, Spanish forces. To the background, the Normans, or English if you will, took possession of Ireland during the 12th century. But in the following centuries, they assimilated to the Irish culture and the Irish clans and earls gained more and more power. During the 16th century, England controlled the area around Dublin and cities, and the rural, and rural Ireland was under control of Irish clans. Of course, that, the English had the ambition to extend their area of influence. Hugh O'Neill, as we mentioned, Hugh O'Neill was the head of the most powerful clan located in the north of Ireland, and he had ambitions. Perhaps he wanted to be something like the King of Ireland. England, at the time, England was in war with Spain. Now, in the northwest, the clans of Donald and Maguire resisted in the English administration, and they attacked English outposts. And then, at some point, they were able to win a battle, and they won the Battle of the Fort of the Biscuits mentioned earlier. Now O'Neill sensed, ooh, there could be something in. Here's an opportunity, and he joined the rebellion. And then O'Neill won two more battles, and had then more or less gained control over Ireland. So he appointed allies um, and followers as earls and chieftains all across the island. There were Fitzthomas, um, Earl of Desmond, as one of the most important. We had uprisings and rebellions all over Ireland. In Munster, the entire English settlement was, de was destroyed. But the cities and the area around Dublin, they stayed loyal to the English crown. Now, this had to be sorted out. The Earl of Essex was sent to Ireland. He landed with approximately 17,000 troops, took control of the south of Ireland, and led expeditions to the north. But that was not too successful. Uh, he lost a decisive battle on the Curlew Pass. Then he entered negotiations with O'Neill, could manage a ceasefire, but it was all, he was not authorized to do so. And yeah, half a year after he landed, he returned to England, but also because he had no uh, authority to do some of the stuff he did. He was later um, yeah, put to trial in London. Yeah, there's someone the English victory has to come. Two more capable um, Englishmen were sent over, Lord Mountjoy as Lord Deputy and George Carew as Lord President of Munster. First thing Mountjoy did, he invaded um, Ulster and destroyed vast uh, territories of the rebels and that led to famine and the tying up of Irish forces. Carew won a battle in the south, and then he took Fitzthomas and Florence McCarthy. McCarthy, a very important um, chieftain in the south. Both of them he took prisoner. Now, Spanish forces landed in near Kinsale in the south, last hope for the Irish. Mountjoy immediately laid siege on Kinsale, and then O'Neill and other um, Irish leaders with the main troops, or nearly all the troops, marched south, but... They lost the Battle of Conseil, and that meant the Spanish forces and the Irish are out. The war is won for England. And yeah, as mentioned in the beginning, 30th of March uh, 1603, O'Neill surrendered. Now, the war was quite nasty. It is estimated that 100,000 died. For O'Neill, it was not too bad initially, or actually it was not too bad. The Treaty of Melifon brought peace a new order for Ireland. O'Neill was still, he, he could still have his uh, core territories. All right, he, has, he had to swear allegiance to the English crown. The English law was introduced and English was the official language now. But, of course, there had to be deep mistrust between the Irish lords and the English. O'Neill, O'Donnell and other lords left Ireland in 1607, so shortly after the war. They wanted Spain to, again, to invade and support their fight for independence. This is called the Flight of the Earls. Now, the territories of, of the states of the um, fled lords uh, was confiscated and given to English settlers. 
This war meant that England and later Britain had control over Ireland for the next centuries. There were more rebellions, but this was actually a very decisive moment to have English and British control over the whole of the British Isles. That was the Nine Years' War in Ireland in five.